Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, street sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade three. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there's an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages, and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. Hello Grade Threes and welcome to My Zone Online School. My name is Teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today. Our theme this week is Infectious Diseases. And before we get into any lessons, my dear friends, we need to sanitize. Remember, sanitizing doesn't mean that you are always 100% safe which means that you need to sanitize regularly and make sure that when you do, you thoroughly cover both hands. For today's lesson, we will be talking about reading, mathematics and punctuation. Now, my dear friends, let us turn to page six. On page six, we are going to start with a comprehension. Now, this comprehension is about Peter. And we're gonna learn why we are going to be talking about Peter in a little bit. But before we do that, I would like to remind you that for a comprehension, we always read it three times. The first time is so that we can understand what the story is talking about. The second time is to make sure that we get all of our answers from the comprehension. And then the third time is to check whether we answered all the questions correctly. So now that we know what to do, let us begin by reading for a first time. Peter is sick. Peter sits next to Rosie in class. Yesterday, he had a sore throat and he was feeling sick. Today, Peter is not at school. Mrs. Brandt, their class teacher, told the class that he is sick and at home. He has measles. His mother informed the teacher that he has a high fever, cough, a runny nose, and watery eyes. He also has red spots on his face and on his body. Poor Peter! When Rosie gets home, she tells her mother about Peter. She asks her mother if she will also get measles. Mother says that she won't get measles because when she was small, she was vaccinated against measles. Rosie is pleased to hear this, but she is very sorry for Peter. So this is the story about Peter and I'm sure you just feel as sad for him as Rosie does. But before we continue with any questions, some of you may be asking, what are the measles? Well, I have a picture to show you what measles may look like. 
Now with this picture, we can see that we have a boy similar to Peter who has the measles. As you can see, he is covered in red sores. These sores can become very painful and itchy at times. So apart from the sores that this boy has when he has the measles, we also learn that if you have measles, you cough and you have watery eyes and other symptoms as well. So when you have measles, you are most likely to look like this and you feel very, very sick. Now that we know what you may look like if you have measles, let's now go into our questions. So the first question is asking, what is the title of the story? What is the title of the story? Number two is saying, who sits next to Peter in class? Number three is asking you for the symptoms of measles. Remember what we said the word symptoms means. Number four is asking, why is Peter not in class today? Then number five is saying, what do you think vaccination means? So these are our questions and I'd like you to please read them carefully before you answer. Now before we continue, we need to read a second time so that we find our questions and answers. Remember, when we're reading now, you must have your ears wide open so that you'll be able to find your answers easily. Let us begin with the title of the story. Peter is sick. Peter sits next to Rosie in class. Yesterday, he had a sore throat and was feeling sick. Today, Peter is not at school. Mrs. Brandt, their class teacher, told the class that he is sick and at home. He has measles. His mother informed the teacher that he has a high fever, cough, a runny nose, and watery eyes. He also has red spots on his face and on his body. Poor Peter. When Rosie gets home, she tells her mother about Peter. She asks her mother if she will also get measles. Mother says that she won't get measles because when she was small, she was vaccinated against measles. Rosie was pleased, is pleased to hear this, but she is very sorry for Peter. So this is our comprehension passage for today, boys and girls. Please find your answers and if you're not sure, you're allowed to read again and again. Just make sure that when you are done answering, you read it for the last time to check all your answers. Have fun and I will see you soon after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. For our lesson now, let us turn to page 7. On page 7, we have a lot of interesting maths to do. We are going to be using our numbers and counting on or estimating. For number one, we are going to count on. Now, as you can see, all of them are very different and we're not going to do all of them together. Instead, I'd like to show you how you can count on by only doing number one D. So let's take a look at number one D. Now, number one D, you can clearly see that the first number is 100. So we have 100, 200, 300 
And of course we know what the next answer is. But the question is how do we get it in the first place? Well, what I would like you to do is find what is the number between 100 and 200. For you to get to 100, or rather 200, how many do you need to count? And the answer here, between 100 and 200, you can find by saying 200 minus 100, which is almost the same as saying 2 minus 1. So we are going to say that between these two, we are going to have a hundred numbers. And then we need to find out what is between 200 and 300. Now, how many numbers are in between 200 and 300? That's what we want to find out. So we would have to say 300 minus 200. Now if we say 300 minus 200, our answer will be 100. So this is how we get our answer. We know that between each one, there is 100 more. So 300 and then we add another 100 will become our answer. If we say 300 plus another 100, our answer will become 400. And then from there, we move on to say 400 plus another 100. So we say 400 plus another 100, what will be our answer? And our answer will be 500. Then we continue by saying 500 plus another 100. So we say 500 plus another 100 will give us 600. So boys and girls, what is important is to find the numbers in between the ones you already have by subtracting. So please try that for the rest of them. Now we're going to move to number two. Number two is very interesting. It is asking us to estimate. Now the word estimate means to guess. So first we have to estimate and then record the number. And then after that, we will actually count how many tablets are in the bottle. We are going to do number 2B. So let's take a look at the board. Now I have the same estimate and count. We said estimate means guess, meaning we are not counting at all. So just by looking at the bottle, how many do you think are in? And I'm going to give you only three seconds to guess. One, two, three. Time's up. <laughs> so I'm going to guess that they are maybe hmm, 20. So I will write my guess, which is my estimate, as 20. You can put your estimate as any other number. So now that we have estimated, we need to count. Because when we estimate, we are guessing, we have not counted at all. So we now need to count what is in the jar. So let us go. We will count each one and as we are counting, we will cross out the pill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So there are 17 in the jar, which means where it's written count, you are going to write 17. Did you get your guess correct? I didn't. I guessed or estimated that there were 20, but in fact, there were 17. 
So you're going to do the rest by yourself, the two that are remaining. Then after that, you're going to move on to number three. Now number three is asking us to find the number before or after. So we're going to do the first two together. When we are saying before, we want to find out what is the number standing in front of the number we have been given. So the number in front of the number that we have been given. And when we say what is, what comes after, we are talking about the number that comes behind the number that we have been given. So the number before is the one that we find in the front and then the number after is the one that we find behind. We want to find what is after 210. Now this is very simple because all you need to do is cover the hundreds. And when you cover the hundreds, the number becomes much easier for us. So we want to find out what is the number after 10. And we know that the number after 10 is 11. So we know that we have 11, but we need to, re to put back the 2. So we say 211. Now we know that after 210 comes the number 211. Let's now try and find the number before. Now the number before means that we are looking for this one here. So we take a look and we cover our hundreds and now we can say what is the number before 74? Now if it's still too hard for you, you can cover the 7 as well. And you can say, what is the number before 4? And the number before 4 is 3. So we are going to now put back our 1 and our 7. 1 is there, 7 is there. And then we can put the number before 4, which was 3. So now we can say the number before 174 is 173. Now that we're done with number 3, I want you to do the rest by yourself and let's quickly move to number 4. Number 4 now is asking us to write the numbers in order from small to big. So we're going to take one of the pills jars and do it from small to big. Now remember boys and girls, small to big means that on the number line we will be starting from zero and counting as we get bigger and bigger. So small starts from zero moving all the way up to nine. In this case we have hundreds, tens and units. So we are only going to be focusing on the tens. We always focus on the number before. So the number here is seven and five, one and one. So we need to go slowly from small to big. So we check now on the numbers that we have underlined, the digits we have underlined if we have a zero. Do we have a zero? No, it doesn't look like we have a zero. So we cross the zero out. Do we have a one? Yes, we have two ones actually. So now we need to know which one is bigger. Is it 612 or 619? Remember, we want to write the smallest number. So if we are saying 612, is the smallest one, that is good because we would have checked the unit now. Now if the tens are the same, we go backwards and check the units. In this case, our two is smaller than nine. So we know that 612 is smaller than 619. So we will write 612. And then we will cross out 612 from the bottle 
and move on to write 619 because that means that is the next smallest one. So we write 619 and we cross it out in the bottle. So we, have, we are done with one in terms of our tens. We can move on. Now we are looking for a two. Is there a two here? No, there is not. So we cross it out. Is there a three in our tens? No, there is no three. So we are going to cross it out as well. Is there a four in our tens? No, there's no four. So that means we also have to cross it out. Is there a five in our tens? Yes, there is in 656. So we are going to write 656 as our next number. So we are going to circle the 5 in our number line and then cross out 656. That means that our big number there is 670. So we are going to write 670 as our last number. Now I'd like you to try this one by yourself for the next one. And all of them, my dear children, are very simple. Just remember the rules for each one. Number one, you need to find the difference between the two numbers you were given by subtracting the bigger number from the smaller number or the smaller number from the bigger number. <laughs> then number two, you are guessing. First and then you count. Number three, you need to find out which one is before or after the number you have been given. And for number four, you can draw your number line to find out which numbers can be arranged from small to big. Have fun, my dear, dear grade threes. And remember, if you're not sure, you can always ask for help. I will see you soon after the advert break. Do you have children in the age range of five to six years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 081 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre-primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over seven different languages. Now, grade threes, let's do something a little bit more challenging on page eight. On page eight, we are going to be doing some punctuation. Now, this one is tricky because you are going to have to do the first thing, which is to read the passage out loud by yourself to an adult. Then, you're going to check if you can read it without taking any other breaths, meaning you're only going to use one breath to read the whole passage. And then after that, you're going to tell us how many times you had to stop and breathe. So after doing that, you're going to rewrite the paragraph using the correct punctuation. In this case, we're going to be using capital letters, commas, and full stops. I want you to please, please, please take your time with the sun because sometimes it looks like they may be a capital letter where a word should be, but it can actually be a continuation of a sentence. Now I'm going to try and read this one with you without stopping and let's see how far I can go. So remember the first challenge is to read it without taking any other breaths and then to say how many breaths you had to take. So let us begin together. It says, Mom is trying to make me healthy packed lunches now that my school has banned us from having chips and chocolate and salad sandwiches, which is like so I, I was pleased 
This is a good, she said, and also included an apple and a banana, a pot of yogurt, and a homemade raisin flapjack. <gasps> Sometimes I had a tub of pasta salad instead of sandwiches. My favorite is tuna and sweet corn. <laughs> oh, that was so hard. <laughs> Now I'm sure I took many breaths. I cannot read this without taking a breath. If I were to count, I think I took three breaths when I was counting. How many did you have to take? Well, now that we're done reading it, it's now time to put the proper punctuation. I'm going to help you with a little bit of the punctuation. So I'd like you to please take your pencil and you're going to write on top of the word as well as put in your punctuation in between the words. The first one that we're going to do is capital letter M for the word mum. The reason why there is a capital letter there is because it is the beginning of a sentence. So we say, mum is trying to make me healthy packed lunches. So that is the first sentence that we have. So you are going to put a full stop after the word lunches. That means that our first sentence is done and we're moving to the second one. You are now going to put a capital letter N. Now is having a capital letter N. Let's now continue. Now that my school has banned us from having crisps and chocolate and salad sandwiches. So what you're going to do is put a comma after the word sandwiches. So your comma is going to be between the word sandwiches and which. Let us continue. Which I like. Now you are going to decide whether your full stop comes there or you are going to put continue writing. The rest of the punctuation, boys and girls, you are going to do by yourselves. Now I know this can be very challenging because when we speak, we speak in a different way from when we read. So I want you to please read it over and over and over again because it needs to make sense when we are reading. It's also showing you how important punctuation is. So now when you are writing your work, you know where to put capital letters, full stops and commas. Take your time boys and girls, ask an adult to help you once they are done listening to you read. And when you are done, Try again to read the whole passage, this time with your capital letters and your punctuation. I will see you soon after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. <music>We have now come to the end of our lesson, boys and girls, and I really hope you had so much fun. Remember, if you're not sure what to do or you forgot what to do, <laughs> you can always ask an adult for help, but just make sure that you finish all your work by yourself. So now that we are done, it is very important for us to finish by sanitizing. So please take your sanitizer. Remember, when we are sanitizing, we are trying to maintain our good hygiene. So, sanitize as regularly as possible. Now that we are done, I want to have some fun with Sashi, but I don't know where he is today. Sashi? Sashi? Oh! <laughs> Hello, Sashi. How are you? So... From Sashi and I, we would like to say thank you for joining us today, Grade Threes, and goodbye! Our online school will help you along the way.
Find us at www.zoshi.online and download the booklet. Follow us on Facebook to never miss a video. Subscribe to our Zoshi Telegram channel if you want to receive daily updates. Proudly sponsored by the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, Namibian Community Trust, UNICEF, My Zone Online School, Amos Mir Cat Syllabus, and Capricorn Foundation.